Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to the Swift Arcade. I'm your host, Jonathan Rasmussen. You're in a treat today. I've got a really exciting episode about something that's always puzzled me that I've always wanted to figure out. How do you do movable cells in a UI table view? And we're gonna look at two examples of that today. Over here, we've got an app that basically has one way of moving cells in something called edit mode. Here you can take a table, put it into a mode where you can delete, select rows and move things around. Very, very cool. And then the other way we're gonna take a look at that is also something called the long press, where here you don't have to put a table in edit mode. You can simply take a row, select it, and using touch gestures, move it around and drop it to where you'd like it to go. So that's what we're gonna dive into. Let's take a look. So starting with the edit mode, this is just one view controller that has a UI table view with two sections where the header and the footer are set and then the contents of each cell are rendered in each one of these sections. The sections are just defined here as enums, basically describing, uh, providing the text for the header and the footer here. It's a typical table view that it's set up with the, just like you would any other table view, number of rows, sections, and things like that. Where things really get interesting is what it means to put it in edit mode. So what just happened there when I hit this edit button at the very top is we're sending a command to the UI table view called is edit, and we're setting that equal to true. So this is a bar button item in the upper right hand corner here. And as I toggle it, you can see how it's toggling between done and edit. And the action here against this target action is it's just taking the table view and it's going to set editing and toggling it, either setting that to be true or false. And that puts the table into a mode where we can edit and do things with it. We can delete. Uh, if we had an insert button, we could add a new row down here and insert that in. And when we're done, we just hit done and it puts it back to where it was before. Now what's really cool about this is how you can incorporate moving between sections. Now this is done using a diffable data source. And if you'd like a refresher on that, just click the link above. I have a very simple video for getting started with diffable data sources. And that's what we're making use of here. So what actually happens here, the way we set up this data source is we actually extend it. We have a UI table view diffable data source with a section and a type. By extending this, we're providing our header and footer information. That's how it gets populated. But look at this, this is really the magic here. It's these two methods that are really relevant to moving. Can move at and move row at. So can move row at, we wanna return true. What we're saying here is we want to enable all of our rows to be movable. So we have to implement that for reordering and just return true. But most of the magic happens in this move row at section here. And what we're really doing is when we grab one of these rows and move it, we're getting a initial position of where we are in our table. That's gonna be our source identifier. And then when we come down here, that's gonna become our to identifier or our destination. This is where we're moving the row to. And by clicking these and moving around and getting the source and destination, that's how the table view can keep track of where we're moving these into and then ultimately insert them. So if we walk through the code here very quickly, we can just see when we get in here, the first thing we do is we get our source and destination identifiers. These come from our index path, just like a regular table view index path. Then the diffable data source, the way it works is there's really three stages here. First, we take a snapshot of what the table view looks like when we start the move. We then go ahead and do the move to where we want to go. And this is where we would apply an insert, a delete or an append to the new area, and then we apply that diffable data source and it puts it down there. So in code, it looks like this. First, we take our snapshot. This is what our diffable data source says the world currently looks like. Then if we have a destination identifier, meaning we have moved something from one section to another, we go in there and we grab our source and our destination, our from and our to. These are like our pointers. In this case, if we're moving within a section, so if I take this row and move it down here, we're gonna get into this path of the code. And basically what we're doing is we are deleting it. So if we're within a section, we're gonna move it from within here to here. Then all we need to figure out is whether we're moving it before or after. And that's what this code does here. We're gonna delete it from that position where it was currently stored. And if we're moving it after, 
we're going to insert it at the new destination. And if it's going before, we're going to uh, insert it before using these methods here, snapshot, insert items before or after. And that's how it figures out within a section where to put that row. If we're moving between sections, in other words, if I take a cell down here and I move it down here, now we get into this path, we figure out again, what's our destination like in the next section? So this is basically where we get it from our destination section here. We delete where it was, and then we append it to the new section below. So if I had a row up here, and I was moving it down here, it would come down here, and that would be an append. And then once we have everything settled down, we apply our snapshot and that's how it knows where to put it. So that in a nutshell is how delete mode works. You put the table in delete mode, you have pointers that keep track of where things are going. And if you're using a difficult data source, you can use its append, insert, and snapshot to basically sort out where it is and ultimately render the table view back. Next, let's take a look at a way of moving table cells that don't require you putting the table into edit mode. This is something called the long press. Long press is super fascinating because here we're not getting into an edit mode. Here we're taking a cell, picking it up, and moving it somewhere else into the table view. Now this particular example doesn't use a diffable data source. This is just straight up uh, table view. But I want to explain what happens when we take one of these cells and move them. There's quite a bit of magic and it's utterly fascinating. Okay, so the core technology behind this is something called a long press gesture recognizer. And that's what happens when you click on a row, you do something called a long press, uh, UIKit detects that, and then we can do some math and very simple pointer manipulation to figure out where we're going into our table and where we ultimately drop it off. Now what's beautiful and really cool about this example is watch what happens when I click one of these cells. Notice how it changes. There's an animation that pops that cell up, changes the background, lets me move it around, and then drop it and it animates back in. Now what's actually going on there when we take one of these cells is the gesture recognizer first of all figures out where we are in the table, it gives us a pointer to that. Then we take a snapshot of what that row actually looks like. So when we click like this, that is an image set in a view that we set back on the table view, but it's actually just an image that pops up. We then drag around this image and because we're in a gesture recognizer here, we're continuously in a loop and it's just figuring out where are you dragging this image and it's animating. And when we finally land on our destination, it takes that image that's raised up, animates it back and puts the table view back where it is. So there's a lot going on there, which is why I really wanted to do a very simple bare bones example of this because it's really, really cool. Let's jump into the code now and see what this looks like. So here we're in a standard view controller, one I've called long press. I've got my data set up here and we set this up just like a regular table view. Now here is where things get interesting. First, we need to add something called this long press gesture recognizer. You just take that, you give it a target action, a method that's going to get implemented when it detects a long press, and we add that gesture recognizer to our table view. Now here's where uh, stuff gets really interesting. When we call that method, we do a whole bunch of housekeeping to figure out where we are. First of all, we figure out what's the state of our press. We figure out what's the location in our view. We figure out what's the index path or where are we in our table. And then we do some basic housekeeping here just to keep track of what our snapshot cell looks like. I'll show you that in a second. Whether we're animating and what our current initial index path is. So really the way this gesture recognizer works is it has various states. The first one we'll take a look at is begin. So this is very first when we start our tab here. Now when we come in there, we take a snapshot of this view and just basically build an image of that particular cell. And that's what's going on down here in this snapshot of cell. If we go down here, you'll see a whole bunch of iOS code that basically uses core graphics to take a picture of where we are round the corner, change the offset, give it some drop shadow, uh, increase the width a little bit. This is basically building a UI image of that cell. We then take that image, that snapshot, and we do some interesting things with it. For example, we take it, we center it on the cell where we are, we change its Y position a little bit so it drops there as you saw. We add it to the table view as a sub view, and then we do a little animation. 
here's that 0.25 second animation where we click this and over 0.25 we pop up. Here we're just changing the Y, making it pop. We're scaling it a little bit with this line here using a CJ Athene transform, making it a little bit bigger. And we're changing the alpha just a little bit to 0.98. Then when it's finished the animation, we just animate it back. Once we're done, we animate back the original cell. Uh, we can hide the original cell behind it. And that's what's giving us this ability to move and drag it around. Now, when it changes, we get a callback here or the state changes. And remember, this long gesture recognized in a continuous loop. So this is continuously being run as we drag this around. When the state of one of these changes, for example, we move it down here, as long as the user is dragging the cell, we want to also drag that image. So this code here is what enables us to drag that image. We offset the Y. We move it around, and if we move it far enough where we actually change the index here, so here it's in its original place, no change, but if we change it here so it has a new index or a new row at the table, then we basically do our UI table inserts. We update our data source, so we take our array of games and we insert the new game uh, down here at this new position. We tell our table to move the row, so we go table view move row to its new path. And then we update the index where we're currently pointing so that it is in sync with the UI. And that's what happens when we go like this down to here. And then finally, when we finish the animation, it either ends or cancels, then we just have to update the snapshot of where we are. So we take our cell, uh, that snapshot cell, if we had it like this, so we're down here, and we animate it out basically. So we take it, we animate it out, we hide it, we bring in the original one, and that's what's going on uh, down here. We fade out our cell, bring in the actual cell, and voila, we've got our animated view. Now I know there's a ton of code in there, and it's a quite a bit, it's quite a bit of magic, and I really had to study and take a look at this for a long time to figure out what was going on. But it's a really powerful, elegant way, and you see this used all the time in iOS apps, whether it's the Reminder and whether it's the Weather app. I think it's a really cool example that just shows you how to do things like this, move them around, and if you want to have a more conventional means like this, you can also get into Ed mode and work with that. But I encourage you to download the source code, uh, play with it. I've tried to keep it as bare bones as minimal so you could take it and modify it to do whatever you want. But uh, these are just some really fun examples to play with. They do take a little bit of studying to see what's going on, but they make use of some really cool technologies, difficult data source animations, and hopefully you can take these and do something really cool with them. Okay, well, hopefully that was helpful, everyone. Drop me a line if you've got any questions. Please take these and play with them, and uh, have a great day. Okay, till next time, bye-bye.